Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Joan Bennett in Nothing Sacred. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Once upon a time, our own time, right now, there was a little nobody who suddenly found herself rich, famous, and in love. That's the story of Hazel Flagg in Nothing Sacred. And compared to her story, the adventures of Cinderella were as routine as a timetable. One day, Hazel Flagg is living a highly unexciting life in a quiet little village. A day later, she's off on a mad whirl of New York, the toast of the town, a national idol, and the object of publicity so vast that even Hollywood must gape in astonishment. She didn't want to be famous. Her only desire was a trip to the big city. But her little innocent deception went so far wrong that she lost control of her life and, of course, her heart. Our bewildered heroine is played by the very lovely Joan Bennett. And as the originator of all her adventures, you'll hear Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., in the part of a newspaper reporter whose talent for reporting the news is surpassed only by his genius for making it. Many of you have asked for this play and these stars in your letters... And the postman is our number one advisor in this theater. Not long ago, he brought us a letter from one of the women of our audience. That's almost an adventure story in itself. She wrote, I traveled to Alaska recently by the Yukon River route. At the junction of the Yukon and the Big Salmon River, a quantity of freight was unloaded from the sternwheel steamer White Horse. Along with sugar, flour, rice, and hardware, I saw a case of Lux toilet soap put ashore. Someone must have wanted it very much, for already it had traveled hundreds of miles by steamer and train, and from that point it was to go still further inland by plane. Then she adds loyally, of course Lux Toilet Soap has been with me on every mile of my journey. You know, it's loyalty like that which inspires us in this theater on every mile of our journey through the season. And now to begin an exciting evening. We ring up the curtain on Act One of Nothing Sacred. Starring Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. as Wally Cook and Joan Bennett as Hazel Flagg. New York City, the skyscraper champion, where the city slickers and the wise guys peddle gold bricks to each other. One of these gold bricks is being peddled right now in the banquet room of a Park Avenue hotel at a dinner in honor of the Sultan of Mazapan. In all his oriental splendor, the Sultan sits at the head of the table while the Toastmaster, editor of the Morning Star, holds forth on his virtues. Ladies and gentlemen, when the Morning Star summoned you to this banquet, I realized there were only two people qualified to introduce the great man we are honoring tonight. Uh, either my humble self or that... Pearl among journalists, Mr. Wallace Cook, my great friend and star reporter. Thank you, thank you. I, uh, I want Mr. Cook himself to tell you of the great feat he performed, not only for the Morning Star and for the city of New York, but for mankind itself, in interesting our guest of honor in this great project. Thank you. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, the Sultan, is a man of great culture. When I first approached him with our idea, he was in immediate accord. You know our plan, 27 halls of learning, 27 arenas of art, to be known as the Morning Star Temple. And for every dollar we contribute, our guest has pledged himself to give 10. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my great honor to introduce to you a prince with a heart as big as his pocketbook. That fabulous and magnificent potentate of the Orient... The Sultan of Mazipan. Peace. Peace be unto you, my friends. Peace and blessings of culture. As Sultan of Mazipan, it has been my privilege... Let me see. That's all I ask. Just let me see. Quiet. Quiet back there. What's the trouble? Crazy. 
Yeah, that's him. That's him, officer. What's the matter here? Do you realize you're interrupting the Sultan of Mazapan? That ain't no Sultan. That's my husband. Take off them fancy clothes, big shot. Get on back to Harlem where you belong. Paper, paper, morning star, Sultan exposed his boot black, Sultan of Mazapan, the hope of the century. Sultan in rented robes, tricks, morning star. Sultan of Mazapan is Harlem boot black. Oriental potentate shines nifty shoe. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I'm sorry, Mr. Stone. You're sorry. You're sorry, and the morning star is ruined. Well, my fine oriental potentate, I'm not going to have you arrested. I'm going to put you on the payroll as a janitor. Thank you, sir. And I want you always present in the local room where my reporters and Mr. Wallace Cook can drink you in constantly as a warning against fakes. Yes. May I ask, ain't Mr. Cook a reporter anymore? I wouldn't like for him to lose his job. He was very nice to me. No. No, Mr. Cook has not been discharged, Your Majesty. For his own good and the good of the Morning Star, I have removed him from the land of the living. Mr. Wallace Cook is now editor-in-chief of the obituary column. What is it? Oh, oh, he does. Well, tell Mr. Cook I don't want to see him. And now, your royal highness, get out of here and get to work. Yes, yes. Listen, Oliver. You get out, too. I won't. You're going to listen to me. I tell you, I'm innocent. I was just as fooled by that fake as you were. I believed everything he said, just as you did. And either you cut out these fat-headed monkey shines of yours and let bygones be bygones, or I'm walking out of this fish trap right here and now. You are under contract to the staff for five more years. Ah. You're not in a position to resign unless you wish to retire from journalistic efforts over that period. Oliver, you're not going to keep me pounding out obituaries for five years. Those are my plans, Mr. Cook. That's gratitude. I'm the best reporter you ever had. I've handed you a hundred scoops. It isn't fair, Oliver. It isn't human. Oh, shut up. Oliver, I, I don't like to say this, but the paper's going to rack and ruin without me. Look at this. Hmm? What's that? An item from the second page. The second page, mind you. About a poor little working girl. Doomed to death from radium poisoning. Well, what about it? We covered it, didn't we? Covered it. Oliver, you're getting old. Hmm? Look. One, two, three, four, five, six lines on Hazel Flagg. And a poor little small town kid with a few months to live at the outside, doomed, death staring her in the face. What does she feel? What does she think? Doomed by radium poisoning. Don't shout at me. Listen, Oliver, there's a story in this kid that ought to tear your heart out. Where is it? Why hasn't the star got it? I'll tell you, because I'm stuck behind a water cooler on account of some whim of yours. Listen, Oliver, give me a chance, will you? Say, help me. May I drop dead? I'll redeem myself. Uh... I ought to be shot for what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that maybe you aren't the most tittering imbecile on earth. I'm thinking that maybe you've learned your lesson. Oliver, sir, help me. I'll go up and see that kid tomorrow. I'll dig you up a story that'll make this town swoon. Here's my hand on it. All right, all right, I'm a sucker, but go on, redeem yourself. Thanks, you won't forget it, Oliver. If I don't come back with the biggest story you ever handled, you can put me back in short pants and make me the marble editor. I said good morning. You the station master? Yep. Fine. Uh, you can tell me then, do you know this girl in this picture here? Yep. Hazel Flagg, isn't it? Yep. No. Oh. Well, uh, where can I find her? Is she in the hospital? Nope. Oh, just walking around, uh, laughing and carrying on, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> I see. Well, my name's Cook, Wallace Cook. Uh-huh. I'm from the New York Star. I'm going to be filing a lot of stuff in your telegraph office here. Don't think you are. Who says? The Paragon Factory owns this town. They don't care to have any scandal printed. What they say goes. Better take the next train back. <laughs> You're encouraging, I'll say that. Look, there's a fellow by the name of Enoch Downer around here, isn't there? Miss Flagg's guardian? Yep. Yeah, well, what kind of a fellow is he? He won't talk to you. Nobody will talk to you in this town except me. Better go home. Well, if you don't mind, I'll take a little stroll and have a look at the sights first. Won't do you no good. Oh, you said before. Yeah? Good morning. You Mr. Enoch Downer? Yep. Well, my name's Cook. Yeah? Come in. 
Thank you, Mr. Donner. I'm up here from New York. Yeah? Yeah. Now, uh, I understand that you're Miss Flagg's guardian. Yeah? That's true, isn't it? Yep. Good. Now, may I speak to her, please? Nope. You mean she's not in? That's right. No. Well, um, she'll be back, won't she? Nope. She won't be back? Nope. She don't live here. Oh, 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 oh. well. Um, could you tell me where I could find her? Where did you say you were from? New York. Now, if you'll just tell me where I could you find her. You know what I think, young fella? I think you're a newspaper man. I can smell them. I've always been able to smell them. Excuse me while I open the window. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what I think a newspaper man. The hand of heaven reaching down into the mire couldn't elevate one of them to the depths of degradation. Not by a million miles. I think you're being a little severe toward my profession. Not much, mind you, but just a little. Nothing of the sort. I'm a fair-minded man, young fellow. But when you've been robbed, swindled, cheated for 22 years out of a fortune, it's pardonable to formulate an opinion. From New York, huh? Yep. You don't happen to know of a newspaper called the Morning Star. You have the honor, Mr. Downer, of addressing that newspaper's most gifted correspondent. Moses in the mountain. You're from the Morning Star? Stay right where you are. Don't move. I'll show you something that'll freeze you. Listen, I'm getting sick of this taffy pull. Where can I get a hold of Hazel Flagg? Don't talk to me about Hazel Flagg. No siree. Here's the evidence. Mr. Downer, all I want is a simple answer. What is Miss Flagg's address? Don't waste my time, young fella. Here, read that. That's a copy of the essay I wrote. Read it. Go on. Tit for tat. Give me your address and I'll pour over these interesting documents all night. I entered this contest with a clean pair of hands. Who are the six greatest Americans? Read that. I named them and proved why. Name them and write the essay about them, the rule said. And I wrote the essay. The best essay you ever read, young man. And what happened? Did I win the $10,000? No, siree. Did I win $5,000? Did they even try to save their faces by giving me one of the smaller $1,000 prizes? Not that gang of chicken thieves. Here's what they gave me. Read that. A check for $1. Young fella, for 22 years, Mr. I've been... down there. Try to be reasonable. You can't harbor a grudge for 22 years. Besides, maybe, maybe it wasn't the best essay sent in. What's that? Well, it's a it's, it's, it's difference of opinion that makes horse racing, isn't it? And if everyone thought alike about things, all the men would be trying to marry the same gal. And what's more... Don't I... try to talk me out of this, young man. This is my grudge, and I'll harbor it till the day I die. Oh, but you can't blame a newspaper. Wait man. and see, that's all. The Morning Star had his chance to win my respect 22 years ago. They saw fit to pass it up. Very well. I'll prove to them before I die who the six greatest Americans are and who wrote the best essay. I could do better in darkest Africa. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Oh, oh I... I... I beg your pardon. Oh, it's all right. Say, wait a minute. Aren't you, aren't you Miss Hazel Flagg? I, I want to speak to you. Excuse me. I, I can't talk now. Oh, but listen, wait. Good morning, Enid. Good morning, Hazel. Come on in and sit down. Just had a young fellow in here from New York, fresh as paint. I just stopped by at Dr. Fennick's house. Did you see him? No. He was supposed to have those new x-ray plates this morning. Yeah, he's got them all right. He has? Yeah, he was here a little while ago. Thought he might find you. Oh. Now, you don't have to stand there looking so dramatic like Eliza crossing the ice. Sit down. I'll get some news for you. Oh, I can't help feeling a little bad. You couldn't either if you were going to die. Well, you can stop giving yourself the airs of a dying swan. According to the new x-ray plates, you ain't gonna die. Unless you get run over or something. What? You heard me. I don't like to chew my cabbage twice. Enoch. Enoch, I... I'm not going to die. That's what the doc says. You're fitter than a fiddle. And stop gawking at me. Oh, oh! I've got to cry, Enoch. I can't help oh, come, it. Come, come, come. This ain't no way to behave. You'd think it was bad news instead of good. Oh, but Enoch, it's so sudden. Well, the doc was mighty pleased. He says that first diagnosis was a mistake. Says he got so he was seeing radium poisoning everywhere. Oh, I've been awfully brave, haven't I? Not to cry before. Please say I have. Well, now that it's all over, I, I don't mind telling you, Hazel, I felt kind of sorry for you. Sort of. I've been under a great strain. Oh, you know, I don't know what I'm so happy about, Enoch. It, it sort of spoiled my trip. Huh? What trip's that, Hazel? Well, I was going to take that $200 you get for dying in Aikensville and go to New York and blow it all in and, and die happy. And now I've got to stay in Aikensville. <laughs> well, that is a nice thing to say. So that's your gratitude for being snatched from the jaws of death. Oh, I don't 
don't know whether I'm happy or miserable. I'm all mixed up. Oh, I, I'm terribly grateful to Dr. Fennick, of course. Only it, it's kind of startling to be brought to life twice. And each time in Aikensville. Goodbye, Enoch. Well, I'll be darned. Miss Flagg. Oh, Miss Flagg, yes. I, I'm... I'm Wallace Cook from the New York Star. I've come to see you. I know it's hard for you to talk, but if you'll just listen to me a little while... Oh, I, I have nothing to say now. It's sort of too late. I know how you feel, Miss Flagg. I won't ask you any questions about your ailment. Oh, that's all right. We just heard something. The new x-rays have come, and, and they prove that the diagnosis... Oh, please, don't cry. I, I was thinking while I was waiting for you to come out. I have an idea. I want you to come to New York with me. Huh? As my guest, as the guest of the Morning Star. Now, don't say anything until I tell you. Oh, I won't say anything. If you were my sister or somebody close to me, I'd take you out of Aikensville dead or alive, Miss Flagg. Oh, I've always wanted to see the world outside before I, I mean... Oh, it's tragic. You've lived here all your life, huh? Twice that long. You poor kid. <laughs> you, you've never been in New York. Huh? Well, my grandmother took me when I was three, but... I didn't appreciate Listen, it. Listen, we'll show you the town. We'll take you everywhere. You'll have more fun than if you lived a hundred years in this moth-eaten, yep and nope village. Oh, that's so very true. Is it a bargain? Oh, oh, I don't know. It would be imposing on everybody and... Imposing? In what way? Well, I just thought it would be wrong to make people sad. I mean, I'd be kind of a killjoy, wouldn't I? Listen, I'll be frank with you. Even if I sound like a ghoul... You'll be a sensation. The whole town will take you to its heart. You'll have everything you ever dreamed of, and you'll have it on a silver platter. You'll be like Aladdin with a magic lamp to rub. You mean they'll like me just because I'm dying? Well, that's a cruel way to put it. No, they'll, um, they'll like you because you'll be a symbol of courage and heroism. Well, we'll, um, we'll talk about that on the plane. An airplane? You mean we're going to fly there? Sure, we haven't much time. I... Oh, I'm sorry. I... I mean, the sooner you get there, the more time you'll have to enjoy yourself. You know, I was going to go before. I saved a hundred dollars. Listen, a hundred million dollars couldn't buy you the fun the Morning Star can give you. Come on. Oh, no, no, I, I, I got to take him with me. Who? Enoch, Mr. Donner, you wait here. You won't go away, will you? Nope. I'll go ask him. Will you wait here? Yep. Enoch, Enoch! Listen! Oh, Enoch, look. Look down there. I don't care for scenery from this point of view. Oh, but Enoch, that's the Statue of Liberty. I've seen it. Miss Flagg? Yes, Mr. Cook. I got in touch with Oliver by radio. Oliver Stone, my editor. He's toe dancing in the streets, waiting for us. Oh, I hope he's nice, like you. <laughs> well, he's got a different quality of charm. He's a, he's a sort of a cross between a snake and a werewolf. <laughs> but with a lovable streak, if you care to blast for it. You getting nervous? Oh, no, no. I just hope he doesn't have a lot of long whiskered doctors around to bother me. You know, I'm not coming to New York to play guinea pig for a lot of scientists. Everybody knows that radium poisoning is incurable, so so why waste any time in that direction? Don't you worry about that. You won't be bothered at all. You know, I'm not going to bed till my teeth start falling out. That's when I begin worrying, isn't it, Enoch? It's as good a time as any. How are you feeling now, sailor? Hunky-dory, Skip. Look, there's New York. Oh! There she is in all her beads and ribbons. And you're really going to see it right. Oliver's worked up a demonstration. New York's going to lay its heart at your feet. While the whistles blow, the bands play, and the cameras grind. How about you, Sailor? Anything you care to say before we go into action? I'm going to have a marvelous time. Whatever happens afterwards. Oh, I mean about my teeth falling out and all that. I'm going to have fun first. I am, I am. Well, if that doesn't make them cry, nothing will. Cry? Well, why should they cry? Because you're the bravest kid that ever lived. And there's no fake about it this time.
In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Joan Bennett, will bring us Act Two of Nothing Sacred. And now here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood news reporter, just back from a scouting expedition over at 20th Century Fox. Well, what's the good word, Libby? The good word this week, Mr. Ruick, is about one of the most promising young starlets in Hollywood. See if you can guess who she is. Her 21st birthday is day after tomorrow. She's a lovely natural blonde with violet blue eyes. She's exactly 5 feet 4 inches tall, weighs 120 pounds, and best of all, she has a lovely, creamy, smooth complexion. Hmm, let's see. 21 this Wednesday, blonde, lovely complexion. Of course, she's a Lux girl, Libby. Of course, that's an easy guess, with nearly every star in Hollywood using Lux toilet soap. But that doesn't say who she is, so I guess I'll have to tell you. She's Mary Beth Hughes. Mary Beth Hughes? Oh, I should have guessed. But tell us more about her, Libby. Well, Mary Beth is working very hard for a career that her grandmother can be proud of. Her grandmother? Yes. You see, her grandmother was Flora Fostick. She played with Ethel Barrymore, was in Grand Opera at one time. Mary Beth says it was listening to her grandmother's recollections of the theater that made her want to become an actress. She began studying for the stage when she was just a little girl. Later on, after experience in stock company production, she came to Hollywood. Some chances to play bit parts followed. It wasn't long before her striking appearance, her ability, and personality gave her the part of the young wife and four sons. And she woke up next morning to hear herself acclaim the find of the season. Yes, and she's been on her way up ever since. Her new picture is uh, Sleeper's West, isn't it? That's right, Mr. Ruick. Well, that's a very interesting story you've told us, Libby. Yes, and here's something else that will interest you, Mr. Ruick. Mary Beth says she uses Lux soap every day. Never neglects her active lather facials, no matter how tired she may be at night. She says this Lux soap care is just right for her skin. Really works. Thank you, Libby. And thank Mary Beth Hughes for us the next time you see her for the nice things that she said about Lux toilet soap. You know, rising young starlets out here in Hollywood are clever young women. They value the all-important charm of a lovely complexion just as you do. That's why they never neglect their daily active lather facials with Lux toilet soap. Won't you try these facials and see what they can do for you? Active Lather does a thorough job of removing dust, dirt, and stale cosmetics. Gives skin protection it needs. Smooth the rich Active Lather gently into your skin. Rinse with warm water, then a dash of cool. Pat lightly to dry. Then see how fresh your skin looks. How smooth and soft it feels. Take Hollywood's tip. Try these Lux Soap Active Lather facials for 30 days. Remember... Nine out of ten screen stars use Lux toilet soap. And now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Nothing Sacred. Starring Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. as Wally Cook and Joan Bennett as Hazel Flagg. New York has taken Hazel Flagg to its heart. Newspaper headlines boast of the doomed girl's courage. Skywriters fling her name across the heavens. The city is writhing at her feet, screaming its anguish, and loving every minute of it. And Hazel Flagg, the gentle faker, loves every second of it. On Wally Cook's arm, she's seeing New York as no one has ever seen it before. Tonight, she and Wally are witnessing a wrestling match in Madison Square Garden. Break the other man's arm, Wally. Here, yeah, now, here, don't excite yourself too much. It's just a fake. What'd you say? I said, don't excite yourself too much. It's just a fake. Who, who's a fake? Those wrestlers. The only square thing about them is the ring. Oh, them. <laughs> They're a symbol of the whole town, pretending to fight, love, weep, and laugh all the time. And they're phonies, all of them. And I had the list. Oh, no, you don't. Don't say that. Using you to get a bonus and a byline on the front page. Making good over your poor little pain-wracked body. And I, I'm worse than those fake wrestlers. Oh, I'm feeling fine tonight, Wally. And you and the Morning Star have been so wonderful to me. All those wonderful gowns and banquets and the theater tickets. It's, it's glorious. Oh, stop looking so happy and gallant, will you? It breaks my heart. Hold it, boys! Stop the match! Stop the match! Quiet, please! Quiet! Ladies and gentlemen, I have just learned that Miss Hazel Flagg is in the audience. I would like to ask this distinguished gathering to observe ten seconds of silence in respect for Miss Flagg 
Let her go, Mike. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and ten. <laughs> They're so sentimental. Casino motor and driver, and don't spare the engine. What's that? Another nightclub? Yeah, they're having a hazel flag night. Oh, everybody's being so nice to me. And you're the nicest. Yes, I'm a real little boy scout. Mr. Cook... Could I get personal? Well, that's what we're here for, to get personal. Proceed. Well, I I asked several people, but they didn't know. Didn't know what? If you were married. The answer in capital letters is no, N-O. N-O? N-O. Oh, I see. I don't suppose newspaper men marry as a rule. Not after they're 14 or 15. (laughs) That's the dangerous age for journalists. His ideals are not yet formed, and he falls easy prey to elderly waitresses. But once his finer side is born, he, he, he waits. For what? For the sound of the fire alarm, his flag waits to go rushing off to the fire. Well, what fire is that, Mr. Cook? Love. Oh. Oh, I used to hear about that in Aikensville. Yes, it's gotten around. champagne. Oh, you think I ought to? Well, why not? It's on the morning star. All right. <laughs> you know, I am having fun, but sometimes I get kind of depressed, too. Like last night when I came into the theater and everybody moaned. <laughs> oh, like that. You'd think I was a case of walking cholera. Yeah. You know, I used to love New York when it went gaga over some celebrity. Danced in the streets with a neon light around its heart. I'm getting fed up with these trick tears and phony lamentations over you. Oh, I'm glad they're phony. It, it makes everything all right in a way. Huh? Well, what I mean is I I wouldn't want to feel I was really making all these people suffer. Oh, they're not suffering. They're weeping for pure joy. Greetings, greetings, my little folk. This is your old MC again, little old Harry Bushwick. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But there won't be any jokes tonight, folks. Because tonight there is one among us who adds a bit of unaccustomed drama to our little rebel. She sits here, eyes sparkling, her face wreathed in a lovely smile, drinking in the charms, the glitter, the gay sounds of life. So drink your wine, laugh and applaud while this little doomed child sits saying goodbye. Her last goodbye with a grateful smile on her lips. And now I want you to meet her, that little girl from Aikensville. That little soldier whose heroic smile in the face of death has wrung tears and cheers from the great stone heart of this city. Our own Miss Hazel Flagg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, all I want to say is... She's fainted. Hazel. She's fainted, folks. Hazel, look at her. Speak to me. Hazel, darling. What are you saying? She's going to be all right, Mr. Downer. The doctor's on his way over. Now, if you fellas will just run along home, I'll let you know. No, I'm going to wait. Is it... You suppose it's come, Enoch? Yes. Tell the doctor we want to know the worst. We don't want him to spare our feelings. We've got to press in 15 minutes. Oh, shut up, will you? <laughs> I'll have to get back in there now. She's been asking for me. Let us know, Enoch. We'll be waiting. Hazel. Hazel. Wake up. Open your eyes. Oh, Enoch. Where am I? I'm disgusted with you, Hazel. Getting drunk in the middle of a memorial. I'm not drunk. Just had one little sip or so, and then all those buffaloes ran over me. <laughs> what? What buffaloes? I might have been trampled to death. <laughs> Don't yell. Somebody respectable could see you now. That would be pretty, wouldn't it? Shame on you. Take your shoes off. Take them off yourself. There's three 
o'clock in the morning. Quiet, quiet. I danced the whole night through. Be, be quiet, I tell you. That editor fellow is right outside. You want him to hear you? Let us know. Let us know. Well, it's getting late. If anything happens to her, we'll have to tear out our front page. That's all that counts to you, isn't it? You bird brain. You've got a headline for a heart. That poor, gallant little kid standing in front of that goofy crowd. Smiling. Just smiling. Don't waste copy on me, Wallace. Oliver, there's the sweetest, loveliest kid in there that ever lived. Yes, you said that before, Wally. I'm through. I can't play Paul Bearer any longer. I'm resigning. Oh, here he is. Well, Mr. Downer, is she gone? She's all right, gentlemen. She's sleeping like a little baby. Oh. Are you sure? Just as if nothing had happened. She'll probably be fitter than a fiddle in the morning. What? What's that? Oh, dear, dear, dear. Delirious again. <laughs> nurse. Nurse, answer that thing. Hello. Yes, this is the nurse. Well, I'll have to ask Miss Flagg. Miss Flagg, there are 20 little school children downstairs to sing for you. Mr. Stone arranged for it yesterday. Oh, oh that's horrible. I'll go mad. Later, later. Hello. A little later, please. Morning, Miss Rafferty. Good morning, Mr. Downer. How was the patient this morning? Feeling better? It's hard to say. Mr. Downer, don't you think we should have a doctor in? Doctor? We have a doctor. He was here last night. Well, that's strange. Why didn't he leave me any orders? If Miss Flagg has radium poisoning, no, I no, think No, no, that... Miss Rafferty. I imagine the doctor knows more about Miss Flagg's condition than we do. Uh, step outside, please. Certainly, Mr. Downer. Hmm. That young lady's getting a little too inquisitive. Oh, Enoch, I wish we could have a doctor. I feel awful. Now, <clears throat> I brought you something. Raw eggs, just what you need. Now, drink them right down. They'll settle your stomach. Oh, Enoch, what's the matter with me? Nothing much. You've got what is known as a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something worse than that. I've got a conscience. I'm ruining him, Enoch. Ruining who? Wallace, Mr. Cook. Oh, him. Have another egg. <laughs> Enoch, listen. He thinks I've helped him become a great journalist, and they're giving him a bonus. Well, it's coming out of the $10,000 they owe me. If I'm not complaining, why should he worry? He thinks I've helped him, and it makes him feel bad. Oh, I can't stand it. You know what'll happen when they find out that I'm a good-for-nothing fake? Shh, they'll blame Donna. him. They'll burn down the newspaper. They'll have Wally Lynch. Oh, Enoch, why did you let me come to New York? If you were only as honest as you love. <laughs> Mr. Cook is here to see Miss Flagg. Do you feel able to speak to him? Tell him. Tell him to come in. Hello. Hello, Hazel. Hello. Hello, Enoch. It, it won't hurt if I visit her a while. No, 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 no. The doc says she's doing very well for her last few weeks. <laughs> If you want me, I'll be right outside. I, um, I, I wouldn't disturb you, Hazel, but I'm going away, and I thought I might not see you again. You're going away? Where? Oh, uh, just to Albany. Oh, what for? Just to see the governor. Wallace, what for? Now, Hazel, you mustn't get overwrought. Oh, it's something about me. I must know about it. It's about the arrangements, Hazel. What arrangements? For the funeral. <laughs> what funeral? Yours. Oh. Have I shot you? Oh, no, no. Everybody's got to have a funeral sometime. Oh, but not like yours, darling. I meant to keep it as a surprise. <laughs> oh, it's better this way. You're telling me in advance so I can get used to it. I, I hope it's going to be a little funeral. Well, not exactly. Uh, according to the present registration, there'll be about 30,000 automobiles and a considerable number on foot. Oh, about half a million, I think. Oh, my. Oh, that's not half enough to mourn for you. I'm getting the governor to declare a public holiday for the occasion. Oh, like St. Valentine's Day. I'm glad I told you. Hazel, I want you to know now and always that I think you're magnificent. Oh, please. Please don't say that. You have to go away. Oh, I'll be back by night. I've got another surprise for you. I'll not tell you now. Oh, I've got to hear it. Tell me. Well, I, I promised you I wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do what? Call in any doctor. Hazel, I've broken my promise. Dr. Emil Egelhofer is in town, and I'm bringing him up to see you. What for? Hazel, he's the greatest expert on radium poisoning in the world. There's always an outside chance, just one in a million. Wally, listen. Hazel, I'm sorry, but I've, I've got to run to catch the plane. Don't worry now, it's only a long shot, but we can hope. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
Dr. Egglehoff. Oh. Hey, don't. The little children are here. What little children? They're going to sing to you. <clears throat> Enoch. This is the end. Huh? Don't ask any questions. Just listen to me. We're caught. Dr. Egelhofer is coming here tonight to expose me and Wally. No, no, no. Don't worry. We'll just refuse to see him. Oh, there's only one way out. There's only one way to save you and me and Wally. I've got to commit suicide in advance. Before that scientist gets to me, I've got to be drowned. Oh, shut up. No, I've got to do it. I'll leave a note to the city thanking everybody. You, you get rid of the nurse for the evening, and I'll jump into the river. Somebody's bound to see me jump in, and you'll be waiting in a rowboat and fish me out, and I'll swim underwater, and I'll change my name and hide away for the rest of my life and never, never see him again. Oh, oh, they'll hold the funeral without me. <laughs> Hello. Where is he? Well, find him. Find him. I've got to find him. Hey, Oliver, I spoke to the governor. Never mind. Never mind. He's here now. Wally, she's double-crossed us. Who has? Miss Hazel Flagg. She's gone to some other paper? She's gone into the river. Listen, you weasel brain, what are you trying to tell me? Hazel Flagg has committed suicide. I don't believe it. The hotel maid found a suicide note. The clerk saw her leave the hotel five minutes ago. We've got to stop her. Get the fire department. Tell them to cover the waterfront from the battery to the Bronx. Tell them yourself. I'm going to look for her. <laughs> Taxi! Yes, sir. Where to? I want to go to the docks. Quick. The docks? Which one? All of them. Start at the battery and work uptown on the west side. Stop at every place that somebody could jump into the river. Oh, none of that now, buddy. None of that. That's the coward's way out. No, no. No, no I'm, I'm not going to commit suicide. I, 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 I'm looking for Hazel Flagg. Oh, well, why'd you say so? Well, get going. Here's another dock, mister. All right, wait here. Now listen, buddy, this is like looking for a needle. The whole city's out searching for that flag dame. You'll never find her. I'm still trying. Be right back. Hey, wait a minute. Look, there's a dame. Where? Down there at the edge of the pier. Hazel! Hazel, stop! Stay away! Hazel! Hazel, let come go. here. Let me go. You're not going to jump. You're coming with me. No, 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 no. Let me alone. Listen, I'm not going to Look let you... Look we'll both fall in. Oh! Sure, I'm all right, but I can't swim. <laughs> Wally, keep your head up. I'll save you. Hang on to me. Hang on. Here, here, rip hold of my arm. No, no, save yourself. I'm all right. I'm hanging onto the pier. Pull yourself up, Wally. There's a platform under the pier. <laughs> you first. Go on. <laughs> Well, that's a street trick you tried to play. Well, why didn't you stay in Albany? Jumping off a pier like some hophead. I didn't jump. You pulled me with you. Scaring everybody out of their wits. Stop hollering at me. I I'm nervous. Listen, either you'll give me your word of honor you won't try that again, or I'll spank you good. What's that? Fireboat. They're dragging the river for you. Oh, Wally. Don't you think you ought to tell them you found me? It seems unfair. Well, the fresh air will do them good. I want to talk to you. Wally... Are you, are you really mad at me? I'm mad at myself, drooling away to you about the funeral. That's what drove you to it. Oh, oh to be really frank with you, Wally, it, it wasn't that at all. Oh, darling, I, I'd love to just sit here with you for the rest of my life. Hazel, will you marry me? What? You heard me, will you marry me? Oh, Wally. Come on, answer me. Oh, but darling, there's no future in it. Oh, don't talk like I have. <laughs> I don't care about the future. Oh, Wally, if things were normal, I... No, I mustn't. Don't ask me. Just kiss me and let it go at that without ruining your life. Listen, what is there better to life than we've got? A handful of perfect hours. That's all the luckiest ever get out of it. Just a handful of hours to save and remember. And I'll be there at the end, sailor. I'll be there waving you goodbye. I'll be there just the same as if you and I had lived forever. You grow old in my heart. Well... Wally, you're not doing this only because you're sorry for me. I mean, suppose I wasn't going to die. Suppose maybe I was going to live, oh, a long, long time. Would you still want me? Oh, that, that, that's, that's a silly question. Of, of course I would. Okay, then, Skipper. No, oh, Hazel. We only have a few hours. We can make them seem like years. Yeah. I bet they will, too. (laughs) 
After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Joan Bennett return for Act Three of Nothing Sacred. Have you ever walked through a beautiful garden and wished that all its fresh, sweet fragrance could be captured and combined into one lovely perfume? Well, you'll feel as though just that has been accomplished when you breathe in the lovely, subtle fragrance of Lux Toilet Soap. Thirty-four different ingredients gathered from all parts of the world have been blended by a master perfumer into a single delightful bouquet. No wonder screen stars say, we love the delicate perfume Lux Toilet Soap has. And that's one important reason why this fine white complexion soap makes such a wonderful bath soap, too. Screen stars tell you, Lux Soap leaves such a lovely fragrance on the skin. Well, they depend on Lux Toilet Soap for their daily beauty bath because it protects that lovely freshness that's so much a part of feminine charm. Leave skin really sweet. Now, why don't you try this beauty bath tomorrow? You'll be delighted with the Lux Soap's rich, creamy lather and the way it leaves you exquisitely fresh and dainty from head to toe. Here's a little economy tip, too. Lux Soap is luxurious, yet its cost is ridiculously low. Because it's hard-milled, it can be used right down to the last thin sliver. Get three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow for your beauty bath supply. A beauty bath I know you'll love. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on the third act of Nothing Sacred. The excitement seems to be over. Hazel Flagg has been rescued from a watery grave and is on her way back to her hotel suite. But there's more excitement to come. As she opens the living room door, she sees that Enoch has been entertaining a visitor. Excuse me. It's all right, Hazel. Come in. Uh, I was wondering what became of you. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, uh, excuse me, Hazel. This gentleman dropped in for a little chat. Uh, 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 this is Miss Hazel Flagg, Mr. Uh, uh, why, I don't believe I got your name. My name is Dr. Emil Egelhofer. What? Dr. Who? Egelhofer. Well, shall we begin the examination? Oh, Enoch. <laughs> Dr. Egelhofer, this means a lot to my newspaper. Are you sure you examined the right girl and not some imposter? The only imposter in this case, Mr. Stone, is the girl I examined. There is no vestige, no trace, no symptom of radium poisoning whatsoever. Here are the x-rays to prove it. You will receive my bill in the morning. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. A fake. A phony. Hello. Send Wally in here. Yeah. And get me four sluggers from the circulation department. <laughs> I'll kill him. I'll murder him, that dirty double crossing. Hey, Oliver, you want to see me? I, I have a bulletin and a new lead for you on Hazel Flag that's going to read that sourpuss of yours into a nosegay of smiles. So sit tight and tuck in your ears. Go right ahead, Mr. Cook. Well, listen, Miss Flag is getting married tonight. You can wish me luck, old weasel brain. It's me. <laughs> hey, you stewed or something? I came in for congratulations. What's up? What's eating you? I am sitting here, Mr. Cook. Toying with the idea of removing your heart and stuffing it like an olive. Hang on, Oliver. You're going screwy. You've ruined me. You've ruined the morning star. You've blackened forever the fair name of journalism. You and that foul mistake of nature, Hazel Flagg. You've got some excuse for those words, Oliver. Let's have it quick. Excuse, excuse. Look at that. What is it? An x-ray plate. Look at that skeleton. Not a bone missing. Down to the last healthy vertebrae intact. And that's Hazel Flagg. The biggest fake of the century. She hasn't got anything wrong with her at all? Oh, I can't believe it. It's, it's like some miracle. All right, boys, come on right in here. Oh, hello, boss. Here we are. Who are you? We're the four boys from the circulation department. Oh. Good. Three of you get to the Waldorf Hotel as quick as you can. Grab Hazel Flag and bring her to this office if you have to drag her through the street by the hair. Okay, you're going, boys. Wait a minute. So help me, Oliver. If you hurt that kid, I'll knock you cold. I'll bring you. Shut up. Go ahead, boys. You. Wait here. Me, boss. Yeah. I want you to stay and take care of this maniac. Keep your eye on him. He's dangerous. If he makes a move, I'll slug him, huh? Right. Oliver, you're not going to hurt her. Shut up. 
I'm marrying her. Get that into that thick skull of yours. I don't care how we've been taken or what she's done. I'm in love with her. Oh, that's a beautiful thought. I thank heaven on my knees that she's a fraud and a fake and isn't going to die. You're on your knees, are you? When the whole town's getting ready to laugh at us, a howl that'll be heard around the world. Well, let him laugh. I'll do my own laughing back. And I want to make one speech to our dear readers before they carry our heads off on a pike. I want to tell them that we've been their benefactors. We gave them a chance to pretend their phony hearts were dripping with the milk of human kindness. You, buddy. What's your name? Me, Max. I want quiet in this office, Max. Quiet, so I can think. So Hazel Flagg's a fraud, eh? Gag him. Come here, sonny. Well, when you start yelling foul, remember she was just a circulation stunt for you. Quiet now, Bob. Let me go. You used her like you used every broken heart you've ever found. I'm getting sore now. To inflame the public and help sell your papers. That's enough, slug. Thank you, Max. And before I'm through with that female Dracula, you wish he did have radium poisoning. How's Wally? Oh, he's coming around, Will. I didn't suck him hard. Hello? Hello, who? No. No, who? Well, who's Mo Levinsky? Oh, that's my brother. You sent him over to get that girl, remember? Oh. Listen, what? What's that? Get the mush out of your mouth, man. Speak up. Oh, he's a dumb cop, Mr. Stone. You better let me talk to him. You just get him all excited that he's gone. All right. Oh, Max. This is Mo. What's on your mind? Uh-huh. Oh, that's a shame. Well, what is it? What is it? I'm getting it. Go on. Go on, Mo. I take it easy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't say. Look, Mo, we a whole while I'm going to take up with Mr. Stone. Well, well. He wants you to know where we can get a doctor. This girl is sick. Who's sick? This girl, Hazel Flair. It's a lie. It's a lie, I tell you. I know. Listen, listen. Uh, ask him. Oh, ask him what she's sick with. He just told me. He says it's something like a DT's, only the dope can't pronounce it. Well, is, is the nurse there? Just a minute. Hello, Mo. This is Max. Your brother, Max Levinsky. He's getting rattled. Now, look, Mo. Don't fly off the handle. All I want to know is the noisy there. No, not a nice. Noisy. Like a tootsie. Oh, give me that phone. I'm getting it. Hello? Give me the phone, I tell you. Here's the noisy. Hello. Hello, Miss Rafferty. Oliver Stone. What? She's got what? Pneumonia. It's a lie, I tell you. Temperature of 106. Dying. Go back and take that temperature again. I don't trust that girl till I get a doctor. Pneumonia. It's like a pardon from the gallows. Hello. Hello, get me Dr. Emil Egelhofer, quick. Listen, Oliver, I'm going over there, and if you try to stop me, so help me, I'll get you if it takes all my life. Stop you? Why, nobody's going to stop you now. If that little girl is sick, your place is by her side. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, Ollie, I'm so glad you came. Oh, you are. Well, cut out the shenanigans. We haven't got any time to waste. Oh, Ollie, I'm on fire. Keep quiet for a minute and listen. Egelhofer's going to be here in 10 or 15 minutes. Dr. Emil Egelhofer. Oh, Wally. What do I do? Uh, I knew you were faking the minute I heard about that temperature. Oh, Wally, they were going to arrest me. I couldn't get away. I put the thermometer under hot water and threw a fit. Oh, Wally, you hate me. I knew you'd hate me. I told you. I told you. Well, let's not go into that now. Egelhofer, he'll, he'll expose me again. Keep your head and listen to me. You hate me. Oh, keep quiet. Must have been a lot of fun playing me for the world's prize chump. Wallace Cook, king of the booze. I didn't mean it, really, I didn't. Now, keep quiet and listen to me. Get out of bed. No, no, let them arrest me and put me in prison. You won't hate me so much if I'm behind the bars. Listen, my dying swan, this is no time to stop faking. Get up. Ouch! You're going to have pneumonia, and you're going to have it good. You want me to stand in front of the window and catch cold? No, that'll take too long. We've got to raise your pulse to 160 quick. We've got to have you gasping and panting and covered in a cold sweat inside of five minutes. How? We're going to fight. Fight! Come on, come on, Delilah. Up with your dukes. Oh, I can't. I'm sick of faking and lying. Stand up here and fight. Oh, what's the use? Why fool them any longer? Because I love you. Ouch! You hit me. Because I'm going to marry you, and I don't want to spend my honeymoon hanging around Sing Sing, blowing kisses to you in the exercise yard. Come on, stop dogging it. You've got to be bathed in perspiration. Get going, you little oh. crook. Oh. Call me a crook. You and your crooked newspaper. How do you like this? That's a baby. Come on, keep moving. Oh. I'll kill you, dragging me around like I was a prize pig with a blue ribbon. There's no blue ribbons on you, baby. Just a big yellow sign marked fake. Oh, I'm a fake, huh? I'm a fake. What are you and that phony Santa Claus Oliver Stone slobbering and drooling over me? That's for the morning star. <laughs> That's for your Aunt Mary. Keep on. Keep moving, my little fraud. Oh, I'll never forgive you as long as I live. I'll kill you. I hate you. I just hate you. You're 
you're going to have plenty of reason to hate me. I'm going to show you cards and spades and lying for the next 50 years. I'm going to pay you back for every lie you ever told. I'm going to flirt and lie and cheat and swindle right through to our golden wedding. Yeah, yeah. Let me just hit you once. All right, come on, come on. There's a girl. Fast, fast. That's a girl. (laughs) Keep moving. I'm getting dizzy. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Now, listen to me. And listen carefully. When you come to, I want you to remember what I'm telling you. What do you mean, come to? I mean when you regain consciousness. I want you to keep... Keep up with that old fake, see? You're dying. Yeah, yeah. Let me just suck you once. Just once on the jaw, and I don't care what happens. I just heard the elevator door. They're coming. Now, don't forget about the fake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, say goodnight to Papa now. What are you going to do? This. <laughs> well, you put up a nice fight, Wally. Is she out? Why, you? Where have you been? I stepped in the door at the beginning of round two. You mean to say you saw the whole thing? <laughs> From the beginning, Mr. Cook. And it won't work. Do you mean to say you stood there and let me beat up a defenseless woman? I did, Mr. Cook. Well, where's your sense of chivalry? My chivalry? Aren't you just a trifle confused, Mr. Cook? You hit her. That's entirely different. I love her. Oh. Wake up, darling. Wake up now. Water. Water. I'm on fire. I'm hot. Well, you can cool off now, Hazel. The game's over. What? The game is over. Mr. Stone saw me suck you. You? to say that that whole thing was for nothing? I'm sorry. Why, you big... Hazel, put down that lamp. What's the matter with you? Are you trying to kill me? Oh, Wally, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know. Now, listen, let's be calm. Let's sit down and talk this thing over rationally. Whether you realize it or not, Miss Flagg, we're all in a very bad spot. My jaw hurts me. Did you break it, Wally? Let me see. No, it's all right. No, oh, please, please, listen to me. Miss Flagg, the whole country is standing by waiting for you to die. The Morning Star has practically promised them you'll be deceased before dawn. Oh, shut up about the Morning Star. I'm sick of the Morning Star, and I'm sick of you. I'm sick of the whole business. Miss Flagg, I wonder if you're aware of the traditions of a great newspaper. Do you realize what it means to those who carry aloft the torch of journalism from the highest editor to the lowest office boy? The lifeblood of a newspaper, Miss Flagg, is its integrity. Am I right, Wally? Word for word. I wrote that speech for you ten years ago at the convention, remember? You can both talk all you want. I've made up my mind. You're what? I'm through. What do you mean, you're through? I'm going to confess. I'm going back to Aikensville. They love me there. They don't hit me on the jaw and push me in rivers. Oh, but you can't confess. Do you realize that just outside this room are some of the most important citizens of New York City? And they're out there by special invitation from the Morning Star. And why? To pass on to the people of New York, to the people of the world, your last words. For instance. Now, this is no time for sarcasm, Wally. You got me into this. Get me out. Use your brain. Mine's done. Where's that downer guy? We'll blame the whole thing on him. He went back to Aikensville. Oh, he would. And we could use him now. We could throw him to the wolves. Just when we need him, he isn't here. Wait a minute. Got an idea. Uh-huh. We could bury her like they do in India. You know, like the yogis. We can stick a tube down her to breathe through and dig her up in the morning with no harm done. You do it, too! Let me out of here! Where are you going? I'm going outside to tell those people the truth. No, Wally, stop her! Stop her! There she is, Hazel Flagg. Listen, everybody! Hazel, keep quiet! I'm a fake! I'm a phony! I'm not going to die! I never was Hazel, going to die! I never come had radium poisoning! Hazel, I never don't! Had any Get back in that room. What's the meaning of this? Ladies and gentlemen, please, please. The Morning Star keeps faith with its readers. I appeal to you. This story must not get out. If you'll just wait, I'm sure we can fix the whole thing. Oh, I'm ruined. Beaten to the dust. The star will never rise again. And it's all your fault. Oh, let me alone. I wish I really could die. Go someplace by myself and die alone. Like an elephant. Alone. Like an elephant. Why not? Huh? What do you mean? Have you have you got an idea? Listen, Oliver, get me a pencil and paper and two tickets to Bermuda on the next boat. What? And then give me five minutes. Five minutes to write your story. Go on, get going. Here it is in the ship's news. Reprinted from the Morning Star. Read it, read it. Radium Girl disappears. Hazel Flagg goes to die alone. Doom Girl's last words. Quote, Dear New York, we've had a lot of good times together, you and I, but even the best of times must end. And so I have gone to face that end alone. Goodbye, dear New York. Sincerely, Hazel. Unquote. Oh, it's very sad, isn't it? Very. And look at this radiogram from Stone. Hazel's funeral held today. Stop. Great success. Love and kisses. <laughs> oh, 
How beautiful. I wonder if I got many flowers. Truckloads. Oh, it's nice to know that people love you. Well, I'm a little touched myself. <laughs> Are you happy, Mrs. Cook? Ecstatic, Mr. Cook. <laughs> Curtain falls are nothing sacred. And while Mr. and Mrs. Wally Cook fail in quest of some peaceful island, we bring back Joan Bennett and Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. in person. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Oh, and Joan, it's, it's really been a great pleasure to do this play with you. By the way... Yes, Doug? Uh, did anyone ever tell you that you look exactly like that girl who created such a stir in New York? Who was that, Doug? Uh, let me see. Her name was, uh... Oh, yes, Flag, Hazel Flag. Strange, I don't remember anyone of that name. Hmm, perhaps it's a case of dual personality, Doug. Right now, she looks and talks like Joan Bennett. Now, perhaps this will convince you, Mr. DeMille. Something I was going to tell you about Lux Soap. Oh, go ahead, Joan, we won't stop you. All right. I was going to tell you how much I enjoyed coming back to the Lux Radio Theater this week. And that Lux Soap is something I enjoy using all the time. It's my regular complexion care and has been for a long time. So you see, when I recommend Lux Soap to anyone... I know they'll like it. Of course they'll like it. They like Lux Soap. If you could see the mail in my office, you'd be surer than ever. What's on the schedule for next week, Mr. DeMille? <laughs> next Monday night, Doug, we have two stars who've never appeared in the Lux Radio Theater before. Tyrone Power and Annabella. And our play is that engaging comedy, The Rage of Manhattan. It's a romantic mix-up with Annabella as a beautiful and likable fortune hunter and Tyrone Power as the fortunate young man who loves her in spite of everything. A perfect cast for The Rage of Manhattan next Monday night. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Tyrone Power and Annabella are the perfect answer for an evening's entertainment. Hmm. So I'll be listening at home next week. Good night. Good night, everyone. Hmm. Good night. Well, a fan ticket is good any time. Before I leave the stage, I want to make an announcement of interest to all radio listeners. The program Grand Central Station will start a new series tomorrow evening. I believe this program will richly reward your tuning in. I've made a date with myself to listen, and I know you'll be glad to hear it, too. Your local papers will carry the time and station of this fine program. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Tyrone Power and Annabella in The Rage of Manhattan. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is an important announcement. All services of the Red Cross, so tremendously important to national defense, here at home, in this country, depend on your memberships volunteered during the annual roll call. These are troubled days. Every American should belong. Join the Red Cross now. Heard in tonight's play were Eddie Waller as Enoch, Lou Merrill as Mr. Stone, Edward Marr as Max, Charles Seal as Dr. Egelhofer, Ann Tobin as Nurse, Edwin Max as Bushwick, Arthur Q. Bryan as Fight Announcer, Jack Carr as Ernest, Warren Ash as Taxi Driver, and Bernice Pilot as Mammy. Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. is currently starring in the Columbia picture Angels Over Broadway, of which he was also associate producer. Joan Bennett will soon be seen in the Edward Small production, The Son of Monte Cristo. Nothing Sacred was produced by David O. Selznick, the producer of Rebecca and Gone with the Wind, which is shortly to be re-released. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>